Okay, welcome back. We were just covering the overview on the external identity federated services that we now have in vSphere that support using the AD federated services. So in order to set this up, we'll take a look at the overall configuration steps that you'll need to do. To start right off though, you'll need to first in your AD federated services system, set up what's called an application group. This basically informs the ADFS about the incoming redirects that are gonna come from vCenter so that you can then use this to then authenticate with the AD environment and then redirect back to vCenter. So that process of creating an application group will then generate a client ID and a secret key that you'll then have to place on the vCenter server's identity provider configuration. So before you go into vCenter and set up an external provider, you'll need to first collect your redirect URIs that you would use to have the ADFS system be able to redirect your browser back to vCenter. So how do you find that? Well, the first thing you do is you go over here to the administration page. So this is not something that we are going to do on the ADFS systems ourselves. This has already been done for us, but just to inform what you'll need to do is under the menu, select um, under the administration screen, select configuration, identity providers, and then identity sources. If you're familiar with this page, this is actually slightly different here in vSphere 7 because in vSphere 7, you now have this additional option for providing an external um, uh, identity provider. So here, this is where you typically would tell the vCenter system about maybe that you have an AD domain that you could have the internal identity provider authenticate with. But no, what we're doing here is we're going to change who the identity provider is altogether, right? We're going to change it from the embedded identity provider over to an external one. Before we do that, though, hit the little info icon over here, right? Hit that info icon. And then you'll find the vCenter servers redirect URIs so that once the authentication request comes to vCenter, vCenter will redirect you over to the ADFS system. ADFS will then authenticate you with AD, and then the ADFS will need to be able to redirect you back to vCenter. And that's what we're doing here. We're gathering the URLs, the URIs, for the ADFS to be able to redirect, because that's part of the steps you'll have to do or at least the ADFS administrator would have to do in setting up the application group on that ADFS environment. So here are the basic high level steps that need to be performed in order to set up a vCenter server identity provider federation. So essentially what we need to do is that first step, obtain the redirect URIs from your vCenter server. You're doing that so that you can then go into the ADFS system and set up this application group because step two says just that. Create the ADFS application group in ADFS. This is done by the ADFS admin team and configure it for vCenter so that you'll include the vCenter URI. It will generate a client ID and a secret key. And then now we can go back to vCenter and create an identity provider federation on vCenter. And part of that is then filling in the wizard that requires the client ID that was just created by um, creating the application group in ADFS. Now that you have that, you can then start career configuring group memberships or privileges through global or object permissions in your vCenter server for your ADFS authorization. So what does that mean, right? So your users are going to log into vCenter as AD accounts well, we just need to make sure that those AD accounts or those AD group members have permissions on your vCenter server, either by setting this up on vCenter specific permissions pages or by setting global permissions. And then verify by logging in with one of those AD accounts. One thing that you don't have to do, which is quite different than if you were to use the embedded identity provider, is the vCenter server does not need to be a member of the AD domain. Normally, if you're going to have the user's log into vCenter with 80 credentials using the vCenter server's internal or embedded identity provider, you normally would have to have vCenter join the AD domain to let that happen. But since now we're simply having vCenter send all identity requests that are not part of the vSphere.local domain will be sent to an external identity provider, that's the system, the ADFS system, that would be associated with the AD domain. So, to kind of go back to our configuration, right? So imagine we've collected the URIs, the redirect URIs from the vCenter server. 
We've gone to the ADFS and have created the application group in ADFS, which has then generated a client ID and a secret key. We can now go back to vCenter, go back to the configuration under single sign-on to then now not create or change our identity sources, but instead we will need to change our identity provider. So not the info icon now, but the actual change identity to provider. So then you fill in the information. Basically what you'll provide here is the information that was created on the ADFS system. We created the application group, which generated a client identifier, a shared secret, and also an open ID address. Filling in this form will then associate the identity provider with vCenters with the, I'm sorry, the identity provider on vCenter with the identity provider on ADFS. So now the flow looks a little bit different. When a user logs in, the login request still goes to vCenter server's URL. That part doesn't change. And then you're actually going to be asked for credentials right there with the embedded identity provider because there is still the embedded identity provider service. If you were to place in an account that is, say, for instance, administrator at vSphere.local, well, that's going to be handled by the embedded identity provider service. But if you try to log in with somebody who has, say, your AD domain credentials, well, then the redirect says, oh, well, this is not a domain that the embedded identity provider can handle. It'll simply redirect you back to the browser to then um, log in using the ADFS as you've already configured an external identity provider using the AD federated services. The ADFS will validate those uh, the connection from you, the configuration of the application group since we had configured the identity provider from vCenter utilizing the information that we obtained from the application group, which then authenticates us with AD since we're now logging in with the uh, AD credentials, you'll notice that the login screen will look a little bit different, right? This screen we're seeing right here in the vSphere client, that's your typical login screen using the embedded identity provider. The screen will look different because now you'll be using the AD federated services login. In fact, the credential login page you'll see looks quite a bit different. Then it authenticates you with AD. Once that's done, the token will be generated, passed back to the vSphere client, who will then use that to log in to our vCenter server and all other vCenter servers in an enhanced link mode configuration. So while this actually doesn't save us that much time, right? This is actually going to involve extra steps. You'll see the authentication part to AD takes a little bit longer than say, just having everything all part of the uh, embedded identity provider. But what you have are the options of providing the same level of uh, audit requirements that you might have where everything must pass through some central federated services like ADFS, well then logging into vCenter will follow along that same process. And you also will be able to use whatever uh, authentication mechanisms the ADFS system actually provides. So things to note, if you have an existing enhanced leak mode configuration and you would like to enable ADFS in that environment. So say for instance, you've already got enhanced leak mode using the more traditional embedded identity provider now you would like to add this to ADFS. Basically, in order for this to happen, right, you'll need a minimum of two vCenter servers in enhanced link mode, because you wouldn't have an enhanced link mode with just one vCenter system. All right, configure ADFS on one of the linked vCenter nodes, and then the ADFS configuration will be replicated to the other vCenter system. So it's actually pretty simple, right? Add all redirect URIs though, that's important because it depends on where the user is pointing the browser. If they point the browser to the first vCenter, the redirect will come back to the first vCenter. If they had actually pointed the browser over at the second vCenter, well then they'll want to have the redirect to the second vCenter. So you need to add all redirect URIs for both vCenter nodes to whatever the configured OAuth application group is in your ADFS environment. So um, we're going to do a lab here. This is actually a pretty good demonstration. You will then configure our vCenter server for identity provider federation. Now we're not going to go into ADFS and create an application group. That's already been done for us. In fact, what you'll do is you're going to drill down to the info icon in the identity provider change screen just to see how do you find the URIs for vCenter, but we're not going to use those URIs to go create an application group in ADFS. That's been done. All we really need to do is then take the information that we got from the ADFS application group and plug it into our configuration settings for our, um, our external identity provider configuration. Now, good news is that the answers for all of those different attributes 
are actually on your lab desktop in a full in a file called ADFS. Um, dot text. So you've got that ready to go. You don't have to be typing all the different values in. You can actually copy and paste it from a file that's been pre-built for us on your lab desktop. Once that's all set, you'll need to make sure you add your permissions for the AD account on your vCenter system. And then you should be able to log in and you'll see just the difference. The redirects will be different. Instead of using the traditional embedded vSphere login, you will see that start and then redirect you over to the ADFS login screen instead. So go ahead and do that lab. We've now finished our second lesson here where we described identity federation, understand the use cases for identity federation and describe the architecture of the identity federation for vCenter and went through the steps of configuring identity federation. So go ahead and do the lab exercise and we'll see you on the next lesson when you're done.